What's up, Kansas City? This is Lonnie Powell Presents. We're here today at the 2010 Gallery on 2010 Main, where Anthony High is a featured artist. And I'm going to ask him a few questions uh, about what he does and why. And we'll start with the why. What would motivate a full-grown man to want to sit around all day and make pictures? Well, art, art to me is an involuntary response. It's something that comes as natural to me as breathing. So it's not something that I, it's something that I really must do. It's, it's an innate thing in me and uh, it's part of my being. Well, I have uh, male friends that I've, uh, when I tell them that, that I'm an artist, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, uh, oh, you are? My wife likes art. How, how would you respond to that? Well, you know, the whole raw culture of, of males and art is that uh, they're very usually very uncomfortable with art in the first, the whole idea of art. And women kind of cling to it a little bit more, but most of all, uh, men look at things more t in a tangible sense, and art just doesn't appear as quite as tangible to men as women. And uh, I think women are the brokers, are the people that initiate the sale and to close the deal on art. If we're waiting on men, sometimes it's just, what, it's just not gonna get done. Is it something in our society that, uh, I mean, even though most of the great artists were men? Uh, well, it's just an overall misconception about art. Uh, you know, men are often driven by bravado, and it's just, just not that bravado doesn't propel art. It's like art is, it's not, doesn't fall under that heading of the macho bravado. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said before, a lot of it is just unfamiliarity and just being a little uncomfortable with the idea of art. That's interesting. Well, uh, other than the physical differences uh, of all of the rest of God's creatures, human, human beings included, what makes, is there anything besides art that makes, uh, makes us different than a cockroach? Well, one of the things I look at is that uh, uh, society really is judged in, by art. Uh, if you look at any major culture, uh, the foundation of those cultures are art related. Even sometimes we don't want to make that connection, but it's obviously there. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, some of your specific pieces and what uh, message and motivation inspired these pieces. Well, let's start with this one right here. Well, if we look at this one, uh, the, the, I am a painter and printmaker. And what I do in my pieces is a marriage between being a painter and actually a printmaker. So my pieces are actually pulled from an etching press. And as we look at this one here, um, uh, we're, I'm trying to capture that sense of the 1940s. And this is the old municipal stadium in Kansas City, which I remember very vividly uh, as a youngster, where you would park your cars in front of people's apartment. And I saw my very first uh, baseball game with the A's here at this old stadium. And it's also the same stadium that Lou Gehrig played his, uh, his last game. And just about all of your, your uh, important or historic Negro Leaguers played there at some point in time. And I try to depict it by having the actual uh, uniform, I bought a uniform from the, uh, the Negro League and then I got a car from that era. era. And 
a lot of my research hinges on trying to have things depicted accurately because you're going to always have that patron or someone that's going to go over it with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> so that's part of the litmus test of trying to have the 1940s or 50s get gar on the uh, gear on the on the official and the right ear card and all of these things kind of kind of work together on this particular piece. Is that uh, Whistle's soda pop? That and uh, is that? now, yeah. this is an accurate depiction of the stadium here. Mm -hmm. This is ad lib a little bit, and I went right. back in history and pulled up some of the. I'm old enough to remember with Whistle soda pop, <laughs> <laughs> and pull some too. some of the older logos and uh, uh, what have you, like the KC logo here. And, right. You know, that's I look at that more as artistic license when you can uh, ad lib a little bit like that. But basically, the premise of the picture is the uh, old, uh, old municipal stadium, Kansas City Old Municipal Stadium. Yeah, well, let's look at, at some of your other art. I've noticed that uh, your art seems to have a three dimensional effect to it. And, uh, tell me a little bit about how you do that. And, about this piece. Yeah. Well, actually, what I do is kind of unconventional. Uh, being a printmaker, traditionally, you build up a plate and then you make a paper print from the plate. But what if the plate looks something remotely close to this? So I actually end up flipping the script and I plan for the plate instead of the actual paper. Right. Same process, but I plan for the plate instead of the, uh, the print. The print. The print. The and I also noticed that Romare Bearden did something similar. But I, I just that for some reason I'm surprised more artists haven't tried that. But uh, I kind of seem like a lone lone person out there doing it at this particular time. And uh, there are th three things working with this: my love for collage, my love for painting, and my love for printmaking. So it, it's a threefold process here. And one of the things I do is I really uh, you can have some areas that are canvas. Some of some of it is tag board. The clouds are actually made of muslin. And one of the things that I rely on in my images, they call it a happy accident. I can do this the same way two or three times, and, and when it comes out of press, you really don't know what's going to happen to it. So uh, one of the happy accidents is, is that the clouds that I have here, if you look at them carefully, they almost look like a topographical map of Europe, which ties in directly with the piece. By the way, the piece was motivated by George Lucas's movie Red Tails, and I had done an earlier piece with a 1917 motorcycle which was with African Americans depicting a famous unit in the African American World War One. It was very successful for me, and everyone that saw that would always say, "Well, when are you going to do a Tuskegee piece?" So I knew I was going to have to do a Tuskegee piece, uh, uh, and uh, George Lucas' movie really. Uh, uh, kind of put me over the top as far as going ahead and doing the research because I had a lot of difficulty with the research, but things start uh, surfacing more about the actual red tail planes and what have you. But this whole composition is a tribute to those uh, fighting men that had a, just had a just tremendous record as far as World War II and, and as far as being a part major players in the in the victory for the United States. Another piece I'd like to share with you is a, a jazz piece, and this is called Jazz Train. And during the jazz era, that's how a lot of those artists got around. They got around on train, and I think Duke Ellington and them kind of had some exclusive trains for themselves and what have you, and I wanted to depict that. Now, one of the reasons why I lean so heavily toward uh, the Negro League images and the, uh, the jazz images because you have the Negro League Museum here in Kansas City, and you have the, the American Jazz Museum. And these are two of the first uh, curated places that had curated art shows that allowed me the opportunity to show and start flourishing from there. So I'll always feel somewhat indebted to them. And I just kind of cling to that thing. It's just something about jazz. Then I also wanted to call attention to the Pullman era. Uh, the Pullman of that, Pullman of, train guys were pretty unique individuals and they have an extraordinary history. So I took the liberty, and this is once again artistic license, I took the Pullman uh, 
porthole window here and added that. So you kind of tie in the whole tradition of the musicians traveling by train and also the important uh, role that the Pullman uh, porters played in the whole process during that time. Now this is a, a piece that uh, I saw in its very early stages when it had no color to it or anything before you had run it through the press. And uh, I must say that uh, I am really surprised and happy at how it turned out. Tell us a little more about this. Well, I almost, can, I, I haven't really given it a title, but this is a picture that was shot, I mean, the picture that I worked from was, was actually an area in Omaha called Old Town. And Old Town has uh, a lot of cafe areas and it has a lot of nice galleries and it's one of the older, more uh, vintage areas. And as I looked at that, I thought, well, this could be in Missouri, this could be in just about anywhere in the Midwest, so this almost becomes any town USA. Mm -hmm. So I also wanted to kind of play around with some different genre. I do a lot of Negro League and historical images, and I just wanted to see how that would play or how that would work with a different genre. And my whole deal is kind of uh, relies on textures. So I, I literally <laughs> cut this out like a puzzle and textured every little brick and mm -hmm. the awnings and what have you. And uh, if I must say, say so, uh, I had some, some nice, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what you call it, uh, mis uh, uh, wanted mistakes, you know, things that, it, things that when you go through the press you get these happy accidents. I had no idea that the tree was going to turn out like that and show as much depth as it had. And a friend of mine even pointed to the fact that some of the crinkles down here almost looked like the cash shadows from the, from the rails there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this doesn't always work this way, but this is one of the rare moments on the last piece in the piece that you see here that once it comes out of press, the things that I predict or the things that I plan for actually work out. Now I can show you some where they don't, they don't work out also, <laughs> but I choose to show the ones where they work out. But I uh, think they call that serendipity. <laughs> and, uh, Precisely. And my whole thing is, um, as I work with this, I just call it calligraphy, uh, the calligraph thing, and I'm trying to just come play around with it in so many different venues that it becomes kind of an art form within itself. But once again, everything hinges on my love for painting and my love for printmaking and my love for, for relief. So. All of these things are working, and it's what, what I have here is just kind of unique, uniquely mine. Okay. Once again, this has been What's Up Kansas City. Our featured artist today has been Mr. Anthony High. And Anthony, could you tell us how uh, we might get in touch with you in case we want to buy up all of well, we uh, get no argument out of it. But <laughs> it would be remiss of me not to uh, compliment this gentleman also. This is Mr. Lonnie Powell, and he is the founder member of Lighting the Other Room, and I am a proud member of the Lighting the Other Room also. And I'm proud to say he's my A number one mentor. That being said, these are uh, some of the area, places that you can locate my art. Of course, I'm a member of the Lighting the Other Room. Uh, you can locate art. Uh, from me at the American Jazz Museum, Kansas City, Missouri, 2010 Gallery, Kansas City, Missouri, the Harvey B. Gantt Museum of, of Art in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I also you can also acquire prints from my uh, AnthonyHyde.com, Fine Art America, and Black Art in America. Thank you, Anthony. Be sure to check out other videos on whatsupkansascity.net and remember there are no great cities where great artists do not live regardless of how well their football team is doing. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community you're really just investing in yourself. Thanks. Thanks.